Let's go hands on with all the new features to Apple TV with tvOS 17. Welcome friends to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and this fall Apple is set to release tvOS 17. This is the biggest update in some time for the Apple TV. There's a lot of new features to check out. Apple TV has always been one of my pet platforms that I absolutely love, and I think it gets underappreciated among everything else that Apple does. I mean, iPhone, Apple Watch, Mac, it's all very big and fun, but the Apple TV, seriously, I love this set-top box. So with this update, there's a bunch of new stuff, and I'm going to show you all of it in this video. Let's go ahead and grab my Apple TV remote. We've got our Apple TV up and running. Let's take a look. The first thing to note is there's now an additional column of icons. You can fit one more row. Before there was five across, now there are six across. I know this seems very small, but it honestly makes navigating this thing faster because you don't have to go down as much. It's really nice to be able to fit just a bit more on your screen at one time. So the, of course, the first thing to talk about is right there on the right side of the screen, and that is the new set of FaceTime. Apple has added FaceTime and the continuity camera APIs to the Apple TV. To start a FaceTime call, using your Apple TV, you have a couple options. First, you can just start it on your iPhone and then transfer it to your Apple TV via handoff and continuity, or you can just open the FaceTime app and then choose yourself from the list of users. In this case, we're just gonna choose me, because that's who I am. It's then gonna give me this alert to continue on my iPhone. And I have a little alert that popped up here on my iPhone. I'm gonna tap accept, and it's gonna go ahead, tell me to place my iPhone to continue. So I'm gonna go ahead, take my iPhone, and I'm gonna mount it onto a little mount here so that I can better see myself. As you can see, my iPhone is positioned and it's gonna recognize that and pull me up on the Apple TV. It's gonna first go ahead and zoom in on me, keeping me completely in frame. Within the FaceTime application, you're gonna notice this big menu down the left-hand side of the screen. You can choose from a bunch of recent calls that you may have had, people who have called you or FaceTime called you, or even who you've been messaging that Apple may want to recommend uh, that you give a call back. So recently, Kelly had FaceTimed me. I missed that call, so I can go ahead and give her a call back right here through the FaceTime app. Additionally, there is a plus button so you can search through your contacts and go ahead and start a call that way. On the lower right-hand corner, where we have a cool need few neat effects that we can enable. So the first one is center stage. If we go ahead and choose this little bubble here, we turn it off, it's gonna zoom out. It's gonna look terrible. You're gonna see the desk because it's not focused on me, all this stuff here. It's not great. Turn on center stage, it's gonna go ahead and zoom right back up to my face, keeping me in frame even as I move. So I move to the side, it's gonna keep kind of following me using the ultra wide camera. Now, aside from center stage, we have portrait mode, which currently is not working. This should light up. That will give you that nice background bokeh effect, give you more separation from your background. If you don't have a pretty background, there's a good job of kind of blurring it a little bit, a little subtle effect. It brings the focus more into you instead of what is around you. Finally, we have these reactions. Reactions are very cool. These are gesture-based things that you can do that kind of react on the video. So if I give you a two thumbs up, that should trigger some fireworks going off there in the background. Aside from uh, two thumbs up, you can give a single thumbs up, which should give a little bubble there. Yep, let's try another one on the other side of the screen. Um, I don't know how to kind of trigger one side of the screen over the other, maybe just where there's more room. Either way, Apple hasn't fully listed all the different uh, reactions that you can do with hand gestures. Hopefully we'll get a full comprehensive list by the time tvOS 17 comes out. Apple didn't just bring FaceTime to the Apple TV. It brought the entire continuity camera, API, and framework for third-party developers to use too. We could see this in a bunch of different third-party applications, and Cisco by WebEx and Zoom have already announced their support coming later this year. Another nice thing is Apple has split view multitasking with FaceTime. So you can jump into a, a video game or watch a movie together all while in share play and kind of see each other, talk to each other, laugh together at the same exact time. It's a really neat thing. So between split screen multitasking to do stuff at the same time, third party application support, FaceTime, it's just a lot of stuff. Now, it's not even just the FaceTime app that Apple has brought. If we open the music app, you can see we're already in a song and it supports Apple Music's lyric feature. So the lyrics used to come up on screen and kind of animate through. Now you can do this using your camera of your iPhone for this really neat karaoke-like effect. So we play the song, the lyrics are gonna start animating up on screen so I can sing along while on the big screen. 
It's really cool. So you can turn these lyric features on or off, adjust the volume of the background lyrics very nicely. Uh, let's go ahead and pull up those controls again and we can go over the camera. That's how you can turn this on or off. But we also have these camera effects. So let's go ahead and add some of these filters. These are gonna be applied in real time similarly using that portrait mode, the reaction stuff that's going to remove your background and put you in these different environments. It feels very much like a karaoke machine at this point. Look at some of these filters, they're pretty neat. Uh, hopefully we see more of these over time or even third party applications that do similar stuff. But yeah, a bunch of different filters here in the Apple Music app for Apple Music Sing so you can sing along to all of your favorite songs. Whoa, hey, if I could just pop in for a second, I need to thank our sponsor for this video, VMware and VMware's Fusion Pro. Fusion Pro easily allows you to run Windows applications on your Mac without having to reboot. You can easily switch between your native Mac OS applications and your Windows applications on the fly for a near perfect user cross-platform experience. Fusion Pro is also tailored to the professional crowd thinking developers, IT admins, QA engineers that need to run Linux and Windows applications on their Mac. Things like network simulation for testing latency, jitter or bandwidth restrictions, full or linked clones for instantly duplicating virtual machines, and remote connectivity for VMware's vSphere and ESXi host to enable users to create and manage complex virtual environments. If you would like to try out VMware's Fusion Pro for yourself and run your Windows and Linux applications right there on your Mac, there's a link for it down below in the description. Go ahead, give it a shot, and let me know what you think. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get back to our other content. The next new feature coming to Apple TV is a redesigned control center. You can see it persistently lives in the top right hand corner of your screen. You can see new system information such as the time, connect accessories like maybe your AirPods. We can see that the continuity camera is active at the moment and the active profile of whoever is signed in. If we tap and hold on the TV button, we can bring up the control center. We can jump down and control all of these things. So we can power everything off. We can adjust our Wi-Fi. We can enable do not disturb mode, which can mute notifications while you're watching something or in a conference call, whatever it is on your Apple TV. We have new sleep timer, a much requested feature. If you pull this open, we have everything from two hours all the way down to 15 minutes that you can choose and everything will shut off. If you watch your TV before bed, this is a really handy feature to automatically turn things off and then extra episodes don't play, uh, it's a whole thing. So I love the new sleep, uh, sleep timer feature. We have the AirPlay option, so you can change the audio output. So right now I'm mirroring this and recording it on my Mac, uh, but you could choose like your AirPods or any AirPlay 2 speakers to send your audio out from your Apple TV. We have the little gaming icon. You can see any game controllers that are currently connected to your Apple TV here. Um, we have then accessibility and um, restriction options. And finally, our universal spotlight search to go ahead and search anything system-wide, TV show, movie, application, whatever it is. If we go all the way back to the top, we can move over one. This pulls up our home kit stuff. I can move between all the different cameras we have in our house. So there's our doorbell right now, uh, the side camera batteries out. Uh, any of these we can jump between and get live feeds right here on our Apple TV. Moving down, we have some additional scenes that we can choose from, all pulling in from HomeKit. So a little bit more powerful HomeKit support than we had in the past. At any time, if we want to pull something up, click on that camera, bring it full screen. It'll give you cards like the accessories that are located in that room that you may want to control. You can go to split screen mode and view multiple cameras at once. And then finally, we can move into picture in picture so you can see what's going on at the same time as you're watching something else. Back to the top, we can currently see our connected continuity cameras. So my iPhone is connected here. We can see any audio that was going so I can control music anytime just from control center here, pulling up that song, play, pause, all of that. And then of course, just the time is listed there at the top. Off we go to profiles, we can choose between the profiles on the Apple TV. And if you wake your Apple TV using the remote app on your iPhone, that will actually sign you in automatically to your active profile. So you won't have to switch profiles if you use your iPhone to wake up your Apple TV. Really neat little touch there. Aside from that, Apple's also syncing other things with profiles now. Things like system settings or connected AirPods. Apple TV now supports VPNs. VPNs are huge, so virtual private networks allow you to do a bunch of things to protect your traffic on your Apple TV. You could change where your Apple TV is located 
by running it through a different server, which could get you through geo-locked things, like maybe you're uh, blacked out from a certain sports game that you want to watch. You can go ahead and say you're in a different city, and boom, you can get access to it. Um, it'll also help for things like schools or businesses that have to run things through VPNs. So VPN support has been much wanted on Apple TV, and it's finally here. We should see third-party applications launching this fall to support VPNs fully and allow you to completely customize all your VPN options directly on the Apple TV. A lot of TV or a lot of TV manufacturers already support VPNs. A lot of uh, you know, routers already support them, but it's nice to have it just built into the Apple TV itself. Let's jump back into settings and go down to general and talk about screensavers. Apple has a few new screensaver options for the Apple TV. So first, for Arial, these are Apple's kind of high flyover ones. Apple's added new locations for Arizona's Monument Valley and California's Coastal Redwoods. Neither of these are currently active in the beta, so we can't actually show them to you and see how they look, but they will be added in a future update by the time this is fully released. Additionally, if we change it to My Photos and we want to use Memories, this is pretty cool. So they're actually able to pull memories from your phone, your Photos app, and give you these customized, personalized memories curated from your photos. So you can see all sorts of memories played back as your screensaver. And these work for both your personal album, your shared album, or both together. Here's a really cool one of my wife and I back in 2020. So I, apparently we got some Monument Valley stuff in here because there's Horseshoe Bend out in Arizona. So I guess we're gonna pull in some of those anyway. But uh, yeah, these curated memories, they're super awesome. I love these here in tvOS 17. Let's talk about the Apple TV remote. This has been a long time coming. If you've ever had any of Apple's remotes, you know that they can get lost very easily. I actually liked the old remotes a lot. The new ones, they're just fine. I don't have a problem with them. But what I do have a problem with is that Apple never added Find My support to these. So you can never find them using the Find My app. There's no U1 chip for precision tracking. There's no speaker to help them make noise if they fall into a couch cushion. Nothing at all. But Apple is somewhat remedying that here with tvOS 17. If you have the latest Apple TV 4K and the newest Siri remote, the second generation Siri remote, you can now use your iPhone to find your remote. When you go into Control Center and open up your remote there, there will be a new button that will allow you to find your Apple TV remote. Basically, it'll look similar to the Find My app with a big blue bubble kind of expanding as you get closer and closer to your Apple TV remote, helping you locate it. It's using Bluetooth proximity, so it's not as accurate as the U1, but it should help you in finding it in your living room, in your couch, in a blanket, whatever it is. If you've got your Apple TV 4K paired with a second generation HomePod, then you can experience the new enhanced dialogue feature. This is really cool, though again, it's limited to the second generation full-sized HomePod. Essentially what this does is pull the audio track out of the mix and brings it into the foreground and reducing the background sounds, allowing you to more easily hear what people are saying on screen. It's a very nice effect, and again, it only works with those new HomePods, but I think it's gonna help a lot of people in picking up what people are saying. Honestly, I use my HomePod minis in my bedroom, and sometimes the dialogue gets very muddied. I really wish it was actually coming to more speakers besides the full-size HomePods. Maybe I'm just gonna have to upgrade my bedroom speakers to the full-size ones to get that better dialogue experience. With tvOS 17, Apple supporting Dolby Vision's 8.1 profile. Now, 8.1 doesn't have any quality improvements necessarily over the other versions of Dolby Vision, but it has one very nice quality of life improvement, and that has automatic fallback to HDR10. So if you're playing something, it doesn't support Dolby Vision or whatever, you can fall back to HDR10 and still get that good quality. Without that, it would just fall back to SDR, non-high non dynamic range, just standard dynamic range, and it won't look as good. So by using this, it's able to fall back to a higher quality before going to SDR. So if you are watching something with Dolby Vision, you're gonna get the best video quality, even if your TV and everything doesn't fully support it. So it's a really nice feature to have, uh, at least having some fallback option. Finally, let's go to the fitness app. I'm gonna go ahead and pair this with my Apple Watch. Choose Apple Watch there. I'm gonna confirm right here. Now that we're connected, let's take a look at the new features coming to fitness. First, let's go ahead and start a workout. How about uh, strength with Sam? Let's go ahead and pull this one up. So Apple has created a new feature called Audio Focus. If we go ahead and tap the back button to pull up the on-screen controls, we're gonna let the workout resume. We're gonna move up to the bar and go over to the audio option. Now, you can see we have these audio hints that have been here, but we can turn these things on for audio focus. You can choose whether you wanna focus on the trainer's voice and their direction or on the background music. 
Some people just want to listen to the background music and follow along visually. You've done this workout before and you just want to focus on the task. Whether you're meditating or whatever, you can now focus more on that background track, reducing the trainer's volume. Or you really want to hear what they are saying and focus along, listen to them and their motivation so you can switch that focus over to the trainer. So it's nice to give you that new option to choose which audio you'd like to hear more of. Down here at the bottom, Apple is giving you two new options to help manage your workouts. First is Stacks. Stacks allow you to take multiple workouts and put them into one group that you can do back to back to back. It's really handy because before you would finish a workout, then you'd have to go back to the page or the library, find the next one you wanted to do, then start it. Now you can just group them together and do them continuously with no pause in between, or you can pause if you need to. Then we have these custom plans. Custom plans, they're created on your iPhone. When you create one for the first time, it'll pop up on your iPhone allowing you just to get started. You can add anything you want to for these custom plans, so you can choose the days of the week, the types of workouts that you want to do, you can filter by trainers and music type, and create this custom workout plan that meets your needs. You can run it for as long as you need to, and then Apple will just give you this plan of these are the workouts you're going to do over this period of time and these days. So I've gone ahead and created one now on my iPhone. You can see my plan. Today we have a kickboxing with Jamie Ray up. I can also view my plan. I can see what I have on set for today. I've got a core a kickboxing, then a meditation. There's week one, week two, week three, week four, week five. That's how long this plan is and all the different uh, content that's been put into it. So I can see what I'm gonna be doing and when, and it can help you stick with it, stick with your schedule and what you wanna be doing. It's really cool. I love these workout plans. This is gonna be huge. My wife is already a big fan of this and she can't even use it yet. Uh, but this is gonna be a big game changer for people who are really using Apple Fitness Plus. So that covers it. Those are the new features coming to the Apple TV as part of tvOS 17. It'll be available later this year as a free update for Apple TV users. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU and I want to know your favorite new features. Are you excited for these changes coming to Apple Fitness Plus? Are you excited to belt along with your favorite tracks with Apple Music Sing? Or are you just excited to see cameras coming to the Apple TV for the first time? This is all a big deal. I'm very excited and let me know what you guys think. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video.